a book. And the name of the book is Help God Help. And uh, there's something that's so obvious that we should almost not have to say it. We all need help. And actually, when God created Adam, he said uh, it was not good for Adam to be alone, and Adam needed help. And that's why he gave him the woman. And I've been married going on 45 years, and I've discovered not only do I need help from my wife, but I've discovered she needs help from me. And I've also discovered we desperately need help from God. And uh, so actually I'm just finishing up this newest book because one thing I've discovered is that there's a lot of times in our lives when we don't cry out to God for help, and we should. Uh, he's an ever-present help in a time of trouble. And there's so many wonderful biblical promises that have been given to you and I. They're called exceeding great and precious promises. The thing is that when we cry out to God for help, we got to believe. We got to believe he's hearing our prayers. And he says, call on to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. And Jesus said, don't be like the heathen who think through their repetitious prayer that they're going to get results. For in other words, they're not really, of course, they're praying to their idols and their false gods. But when we pray, uh, when we pray, we got to pray in faith believing. In James, it says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God who giveth to all men liberally and abradeth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. And uh, so when we, when we cry out to God for help, uh, we got to believe that, that God is hearing us, that God is responding to us. The eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. And so when we pray, and what do we do? We pray the will of God, don't we? We pray the will of God. Now, if you don't know what the will of God is, it's kind of hard to pray. But matter of fact, it says in James, you have not because you ask not. Uh, we know that God knows all things. He knows everything going on in our life. He knows every situation. Matter of fact, uh, God knows you so well, he knows every hair on your head. So God cares about you that much. But he says, uh, you have not because you ask not. And then he said to those in the book of James, and when you ask, you ask amidst that you might consume it upon your lust. So we're not talking about praying for what your flesh wants, but how many know that God still gives you what your flesh wants at times? How many of you ever asked for somebody or something, and after you got it, you said, God, why'd you give it to me? <laughs> and you almost wish you would have never got it. So we got to use a lot of wisdom when it comes to asking God for anything, uh, looking to God for his help. Now, tonight I want to deal with a specific area of believing God or looking to God or trusting God, and that's in the area of physical healing. You know, God wants you healed. Uh, your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Uh, the Holy Ghost dwells in you. We're the house of the living God. And God didn't design us to be sick, to be afflicted. Now, I know in this world we're going to experience it because we have an enemy called the devil. And the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And in the New Testament, in the Old Covenant, we could not see near as clearly as we can now. But because Jesus was the unveiling or the revealing of the perfect will of the Father, Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Uh, since I've been born again, going on 49 years after I got born again, I was raised in Catholicism. The good news is I really didn't know anything. <laughs> and uh, not that all Catholics are like that, but I didn't know anything because I wasn't a diligent student of what they taught. But when I got born again, uh, I, I, and I, 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 really what my salvation was was a cry of help. Help me, Jesus. I need you, Jesus. Come in my heart, Jesus. And Really, that's what salvation is. It's when you recognize you're in trouble and you need help, you need to be saved. And, and actually, the Greek word saved, sozo, is translated in the King James as the word healed. We need to be saved, spirit, soul, mind, and body. We need salvation. We need healed. God needs to heal us. When I got born again, I not only had physical afflictions, I had mental, emotional, psychological afflictions, and I needed healed. And thank God I, I met the great physician. His name is Jesus. He is, he is the great physician. 
And uh, so for the last 49 years, but I've been looking to them. But I've discovered a lot of people have a lot of strange ideals when it comes to what they believe. Now, when I got born again, I, I, I began to read. I had a little military Bible. I was stationed on an island called Adak, Alaska in the Navy. I uh, only had three months of Navy time left. Otherwise, I had done my time. And I picked up my little military Bible, and I began to devour it. And that Bible, it only had the New Testament and the book of Proverbs and the book of Psalms. But I began to read that until I finally got my hands on a regular Bible. And the reason why, I, and, and I use other translations, but because King James was so close to the Catholic Bible, I stuck with the King James when it comes to memorizing scriptures. But, you know, as a Catholic, I, I, I wasn't taught it was God's will to heal me in every situation. And you, and you say, Pastor, you really think God wants to heal us every single time? Absolutely, just like God wants to save everybody. Now, we know not everybody is going to be saved, but that's not God's fault. I'm going to make a statement here. Not everybody is going to be healed, but it's not because God doesn't want them healed, and it's not God's fault they don't get, it, they don't get healed. Uh, we have a lot to do with our healing, and, uh, and we have to have faith, we have to trust, we have to believe, we have to know the truth. And it says, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. So a lot of times there's just simply a lack of knowledge, a lack of instruction, a lack of teaching. Now, now listen to me, I do not teach people to stay away from the medical world. I don't teach people to do that. But as I began to look at the life of Jesus and study Jesus, because he was the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and it says he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil, for God was with them, and he was anointed of the Holy Ghost. It says that everyone that was sick or afflicted was oppressed of the devil. Now, there's no denying that we open the door a lot of times to the devil by our lifestyles, uh, by what we eat. How I many you know what you eat has a drastic effect on your physical body? And so I'm not just saying we just blame the devil for everything. We, the Bible says give no place to the devil. Now, there's people who don't believe there's a devil, but I'm sorry to say they're pretty pretty. Ig because all you got to look is at all the evil in the world, and it's apparent there is a devil. And, of course, the devil, he wants to blame God for everything. And so in religious circles, there's people who say that sickness and disease and affliction is of God. But that's a lie because in the ministry of Christ, he, he said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Jesus never walked up to a healthy person and said, be ye sick. <laughs> he never did it. Every sick person that came to him, every afflicted person that came to him, every blind person that came to him, every lame person that came to him, every leper that came came to him, he healed them all because that was the will of the Father. When we see Jesus, we know the will of the Father. So when I looked at Jesus, I discovered the will of the Father. Now, when I was born in this world, I was born uh, premature, and I had some real physical problems. And first thing I had was, uh, like my brother Dennis, my brother Debbie, our feet were born outward. And so as little children, they had to put our feet inward with braces. Uh, another thing, I had major lung problems, and so I was in oxygen tents, and my mom had to keep our house completely pure of all dust, and otherwise I'd get all congested and ended up back in the hospital. But, you know, what's really crazy is when I got born again, even though I had lung problems, I was smoking three and a half packs of cigarettes a day. That's what I used to smoke. And, uh, but anyways, I also had uh, difficult hearing. I had terrible hearing problems because when I was born, I was born with immovable bones in my ears. You have little bones in your ears that when you get congested, those little valves open up and let the congestion run down. And, but I was not born with them. And so what happened to me is that it would get so impacted, it literally put, it pierced my eardrums. And matter of fact, the first time I flew in a high altitude jet when I joined the Navy, uh, my left eardrum broke because I got so high up to where you know how normally your drum, your eardrums, well, you know, you hear them popping, and it broke my left eardrum, and they had to take me to the Anchorage hospital, and they had to put a new eardrum in. Uh, so I had terrible hearing. Matter of fact, my head hurt so bad as a little boy that uh, I would literally remember as a little boy, I would uh, beat my head against a hardwood floor 
uh, to, to, it, it just, to get the pressure out of my head, I'd beat my head on the hardwood floor. Well, I also was born with a terrible speech impediment. And it's hard to believe, but even as a young boy, my sister Debbie, she would have to tell people what I said because I was born tongue-tied. They did operate, but they could not get my tongue to move properly. And this is how I used to talk. And so everybody, because I had a hearing problem and I could not move my tongue, they thought I was mentally challenged, which I was, but I was manic depressant, so I couldn't speak right. And then my nose had been broken in numerous fights. Uh, one time I got in a situation where I was laying on the ground and a big guy actually took his foot and he, sl he, 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 he slammed the foot down on my face as I was on my back and broke my nose. Well, the good news is the last time my nose got broke, it got straightened up a little bit because it was crooked, you know. And so a surgeon couldn't correct my crooked nose, but uh, that guy who slammed his foot down on my face did, praise the Lord. But so here I was, when I got born again, I began to read the Bible and I discovered divine healing. And that Jesus went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil. And uh, so uh, one night I'm in my barracks all alone, been saved for probably about two months now. Uh, before this happened, though, I discovered in the Bible what we call the Holy Ghost, the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And I had never been around Pentecostal people. Matter of fact, my brother Dennis, who was not saved, but he, as a sinner, he was really into prophetic scriptures about the mark of the beast. And I remember my brother Dennis, he told me, watch out for those tongue talkers because they're of the devil. The amazing thing is now he is a tongue talker. I led him to the Lord. But I remember that when I got born again, I wanted to really share Christ with people, but because of my speech impediment, I could not communicate. And so one night I'm at my bunk and I'm reading the Bible about the Holy Ghost who will make you a witness. Now, what's so strange is I'm talking about crying out to God for help. And if you don't cry out to God, he'll just leave you alone. He'll do what he can, but if you don't want his help, he won't help you. If you think you can do it on your own, how's that working for you? If you can live a life without God, he'll let you live it without him, even as you die in the bed of death and go off into the darkness of eternity. But anyway, so I'm reading in my Bible. Now, remember, I'm not a religious man, never have been religious. I was a drug addict. I was an alcoholic. I was a Navy man. I, I cursed. I sold dope. I mean, I was a mess, and I cried out to Jesus as I was committing suicide on my 19th birthday at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, February 18th, 1975. And I fell to my knees because I was going to cut my wrist with a knife. And I cried out to Jesus for help. And he came gloriously into my life. And at that moment, he delivered me right away from the cigarettes, the chewing tobacco, the vodka, the beer, the wine, the pornography, the rock music. He delivered me from it all. Well, so I'm at my bunk and I read about the Holy Ghost and I cry out to God. God, I need the Holy Ghost to be a witness to you. No, I had not been around. Holy Ghost Pentecostal people. But as I cried out to God to help me to be a witness, because that's why I wanted the Holy Ghost. I didn't know about what we call the power gifts, revelation gifts, and utterance gifts, the nine gifts of the Spirit, which uh, since then I operate in them as the Holy Spirit leads. He'll be operating in them tonight and be speaking to you and helping you if you let him. So anyways, I cried out for the Holy Ghost, and, and, and I, I experienced something. It was like somebody was pouring hot oil inside of me. And it went down inside of me, and all of a sudden, something began to come up out of my innermost being. It's called rivers of living water. And I began to speak in a brand new language. It's just coming out of me. And I'm saying things to God that I could not express in English. Now, I didn't understand what I was saying, but it says, when you know not how to pray as you ought, the Holy Spirit himself maketh intercession for you with groanings that cannot be uttered. Now, remember, this is my, my encounter with Christianity, and everything I'm encountering is supernatural. It's supernatural. And uh, so I get done speaking in this heavenly language, and lo and behold, to my utter absolute shock and amazement, my speech impediment was completely gone. It was like as if I had never had it. Now, this experience was so dramatic that when my brothers and my sister and my mom and they dad, my dad, when they began to talk to me, 
they were absolutely shocked, and I led them all to Jesus because they knew it was a miracle. They, they saw that it was a miracle. They saw that it was supernatural. So now here it is uh, about a month later, and I'm reading about divine healings throughout the New Testament, and I said to myself, well, now, wait a minute. If healing is available through Christ and by his stripes, and somehow I got led to Isaiah 53, 4 and 5, you know, he bore our uh, pains and, and took our sicknesses, and by his stripes were healed, Matthew. And so anyways, I, I thought, okay, now, if healing is mine, now, how many of you know when you first get born again, it's, it's easier to get a manifestation of healing than when you get older in the Lord? Any of you find that out? I found out it's easier to get sinners healed than it is to get most saints healed. I mean, I have prayed for sinners that absolutely even told me they didn't believe in God. And I prayed for them and God would heal them and, and, and do amazing things. But you say, why is that? Because as we get older in the Lord, God begins to expect us to trust him and believe him no matter what it looks like. But I'm a baby Christian, you understand. And so I said to myself, I had to be God. I said, okay. I said, if healing is mine, of course, God healed my speech of Ben and healing is mine. How can I get healed of my sinuses and my lungs and my hearing? I thought, well, how did I get saved? Remember, the word saved means healed. How did I get saved? I spoke. I spoke in faith. I said, okay. And I had not heard of Kenneth Hagin or none of these people that talk about speaking to the mountain. Mark, you know, I, I, I might have read where Jesus said, speak to the mountain, be thou cast in the sea. And, and if you believe in your heart and not doubt, those things which you say will come to pass. So I said, okay. I said, in the name of Jesus, I speak to my lungs. And I command my lungs to be opened now in Jesus' name. I said, I speak to my sinuses. I command my sense of smell. I had lost my sense of smell because my nose had been broken. I said, I command my, my, my sense of smell to come back. And I said, I command my hearing to be healed now in Jesus' name. Well, God's my honest witness. I didn't, I, the day I got born again, I got rid of all my secular rock music. I just dumped it all. I got rid of Pink Floyd and the Dark Side of the Moon and Dr. Hook and the Medicine Band and, uh, and, 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 and uh, all the other people. You know, I just dumped it all. And I went to Christian, uh, the Christian uh, music store, not Christian, it was the Navy music store, and I went through all the music and I could only find one Christian album and it was the singing nun who played a guitar. And so I wore, that, I wore that album out, the singing nun who played the guitar. And I had her playing in the background, and when I spoke to my ears, the music got so loud that I had to turn the music down. And then something stunk so bad. I mean, the scent, my sense of smell came back at that moment. See, I had almost virtually no sense of smell and the, something stunk, and I, I, I began to look everywhere. Something smelled like it died. Well, in those days, I could grab my foot and lift it up to my nose. I can't do that anymore. It was my feet. My feet stunk so, so bad, I about fell down. So I went into the little military uh, bathroom, and I took my socks and shoes off, and I scrubbed my feet real good. My wife would tell you that uh, when we got married and we had our children, I was always, I'd say, now Mikey just did his diapers, honey. No, 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 he didn't do his diapers. I just changed them a little while ago. I said, he filled his diapers, and sure enough, he had. And God had supernaturally healed me because healing is available. God doesn't want you sick. God doesn't want you diseased. God, that's why Jesus came. That's why the stripes were upon his back. And matter of fact, I'll give you another part of the story about my healing. Because right before that, when I was reading about the stripes of Jesus, I actually had an open vision. How many of you know what an open vision is? I've got a book back there about visions and dreams, and there's five levels. Uh, there's one level, whether in the body or out of the body, I don't know. I don't know if you've ever encountered that. One time I had an angel of the Lord come and take me into heaven. and went through a white portal. To me, it was physical and real. And another time, God dropped me into hell. So I've had what we call uh, experiences where uh, I'm telling you it was more real than the earth I'm living in. But in this one, I saw it with my natural eyes, and I saw Jesus on the whipping post. And I saw, and I didn't know what the cat of nine tails was at that time, but I saw him tied to a whipping post, and I saw these Roman soldiers beating his body to where the blood, if you ever have seen the passion of Christ, what 
I saw that day was way more brutal. And when they were beating him, and as they were beating Jesus in this vision, I heard the words, by his stripes you are healed. And I began to weep, and that's when I stood up, and I said, healing is mine. And that's when I spoke to my body, and I got healed. But we got to cry out for God for help. And it takes faith. It takes faith to ask God for help. God is pleased when you admit, Lord, I need help. I need help for everything. I, I tell you, I have no confidence. I need help to drive my car. You say, I don't need help to drive my car. Well, that may be you, but I need help to drive because I, I get distracted. <laughs> you know, uh, I can easily get messed up. I need, I, I need, I've been pastoring for longer than I've been married to Kathy. I've been pastoring since 1977. There were some periods in there where I was traveling and evangelizing and doing missionary work, but most of my Christianity, I've been a pastor. I've been in this church 41 years. I need help pastoring people. Think about Solomon. Solomon, he has a dream, and, and now he's the king, and and in the dream, God says to him, Solomon, well, ask what you want. And, and you know what Solomon did? He said, Lord, I need help. I, I need help to take care of these, your people. I, I need help to lead them and guide them and direct them and make the right decisions. And, and, and the Bible says God was pleased that he asked for help. Do you know God is pleased when you ask for help? Uh, did you know King Asa? He asked for help. I preached about him yesterday. And, and, but there was, came a time when he got a disease in his feet. It was a terrible disease. And the Bible says he did not seek the Lord, but he sought the arm of the flesh. He went to the medical world of his day and age. And it says God was not pleased with him because he would not seek God for help. God loves it when you cry out, help. I don't know about you, but there's some days I cry out help a thousand times. Help, Jesus. Now, it's not always verbally, but it's in my heart. Help. Help, Lord. Help me to trust you. Help me to believe you. Help me to follow you. Help me to lean on you. Help me to depend on you. Help me. Help me. Help me to be free from this world. The cares of life and the deceitfulness of riches, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of it. Help me. Help me to be the man I'm supposed to be, the husband, the father. Help me to be the pastor I'm supposed to be. I, I, see, I, I need help. Do you know that's why God loved David? He said, Saul, he don't think he needs my help. And therefore, I rejected him as a king. But if you look at David, the only time David got into trouble is, guess what? When he didn't ask God for his opinion. <laughs> You know, he saw that young lady taking a, taking a bath on the, uh, on the other rooftop, and he didn't pray. He didn't say, uh, he, he should have said, God, help me to turn away my eyes. No, he, he didn't ask for help. And if you don't ask for help, you're going to be in big, big trouble. I found out something after all these years. I don't ask God for God's help less because I have more knowledge and more experience and more understanding. I ask because I know more now than I did back then. I, I ask God for help all the time. <laughs> Before I came over here tonight, I said, Lord, help me to preach what you want me to preach. Help me to say what you want me to say and not what I want to say. In Matthew chapter 15, verse 22, I'm just going to kind of jump in here. There was a woman of Canaan who came out uh, of the same coast and began to cry on to Jesus saying have mercy on me O Lord thou son of David my daughter is grievously vexed with the devil Lord help me here this woman is she's a Canaanite woman and she's not a descendant of Abraham Isaac and Jacob and and Jesus ignored her but you know what she was desperate for help are you desperate for help he began to cry out help Jesus help Jesus help and and finally the disciples said to Jesus will you Tell that lady to please be quiet because she's really a nuisance. See, I mean, she, 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 she didn't care what people thought. She just kept on crying out for help. How, how, how about blind Bartimaeus? He began to cry out for help. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And in another situation, it's not the same. Two blind men began to cry out. They got so loud crying for help, 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 help. Now, I've never seen a drowning man, but I think I've seen uh, maybe some movies or some illustrations when somebody begins to drown and they're out there in the lake or in the sea. And guess what they're doing? They're, 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 they're not afraid of what people think. And so they begin to cry out for help, don't they? Help! Help! And they're yelling as loud as they can. They're trying to get somebody's attention until finally somebody comes and rescues them and throws a life preserver or jumps in and... And, and gets them into the boat. They cry out for help with this little Canaanite woman. Her daughter's grievously vexed with the devil, and 
Jesus finally says, it's not fit for me to give the bread of the children to the dogs. Now, you would think that that would highly offend her, because if I called you a dog tonight, don't worry, I'm not going to. You would probably most likely be highly offended, wouldn't you? If I called you a dog, I'm sure you would. So he calls her a dog, and people say, well, it just meant a little puppy. I don't care what it meant. He called her a dog. You know what that woman did? It took faith. She says, I don't care what you call me. I need help. I need help. So she kept on crying out. She said, Lord, even, even the, the dogs eat the crumbs off the floor of the master's table. And Jesus, you know what he does? This is God's response, because whatever Jesus said is what the Father's saying. He said he didn't say nothing that the Father didn't tell him to say. I, I don't know if you know this. Jesus prayed a whole bunch. Did you know that? Now, the only reflection we have of Jesus praying was during his earthly ministry after he came out of the wilderness. And he'd go up into the mountain sometimes all night long while his disciples were sleeping or getting in the boat to go the other side. You know what he was praying? He was saying, help. Father, help. Help me to say the right things. Help me to do the right things. Help me to be led by you. Help me to overcome the temptations of the devil. Now, if Jesus, the Son of God, had to pray sometimes all night long for help, what makes you think you don't? You know, the Lord's Prayer, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the enemy. You know what that is? It's a cry of help, isn't it? Think about it, the Lord's Prayer. People call it the Lord's Prayer. I call it a cry for help. Help, God! I know who you are. I know you're more than enough. I know that you're more sufficient. Help! Let your will be done in my life. Lord, I pray tonight, help, let your will be done in our bodies tonight, in our minds, in our emotions, in every fiber of our being. Lord, help us tonight. If you're looking to Mike Yeager for help, you're in big, big trouble. You came to the wrong place. But if you're looking to Jesus, he's here tonight because wherever two or three gather together, he's there in the midst of them. And if you look to Jesus tonight, he's more than willing to help you. Do you know God wants to help you more than you want to be helped? When Jesus stood over Jerusalem, he wept. He said, you missed your day of visitation. Oh, he said, how I would have gathered you like a mother hen would his chicks, but you would not. See, it was pride. Pride says, I don't need help. Pride says, I'm self-sufficient. I don't need anybody, you know. No, no, I need God. See, I, I said this, and I'll say it again. When I first got born again, Somebody said to me, they said to me, oh, your Christianity is nothing but a crutch. And this is what came out of my mouth. I said, oh, you're so wrong. I said, it's a wheelchair. I said, I get in it and God pushes me everywhere. <laughs> I, without him, I can do nothing without him. So uh, when we recognize we need God's help in our lives, it will take away all pride because you won't be saying, hey, look what I did. Ain't I, I'm the cat's meow. Ain't I something special? No, 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 no. It's all God. I tell people this all the time. I had a preacher tell me one time I have a church up in Hagerstown, Maryland. Started it back in 1996. Doing really good right downtown. They have a, a really nice facility. And uh, actually, it's way nicer than this building. And, uh, and, and, and I would say to the pastor I installed there, he, he, because I would say it's in spite of me. And one day he said to me, he said, oh, that's all fake humility. I just looked at him and didn't bother me because I knew it wasn't. Because I know any good thing that happens to Mike Yeager, it's in spite of me. It's Jesus. And he gets all the glory. He said, I'm not going to share my glory with anybody, so I'm not going to brag and boast about, look what I've done, look what I've accomplished, because really I should have done a lot more than what I've already done if I was more dependent upon him. See, Christianity is an absolute dependence upon God. And so this Canaanite woman said, Lord, even, even the dogs eat the crumbs. And he said this, listen, he said, oh, lady, you have great faith. Now stop and think about this. What, what is great faith? Great faith is when you get it into your heart, you need his help every moment of the day. That's what great faith is. Great faith is saying, oh God, I need you. I gotta have you. I can't live without you. 
I dare not make a decision without you speaking to me. And, and you know, that's one reason I spend every day, I'm not, I spend hours and hours every day in my Bible. I've done it for going on 49 years, and it's not because I'm trying to memorize more, I'm trying to get more natural knowledge. No, I need it. I, I need the truth like I need the air I breathe. I need, I need the truth like the blood that pumps through my veins. I need him. I need him, you know. Uh, you know, I, I can't remember. Of course, you know, a lot of times we got, we, we're doing three services every day here now, seven days a week. Uh, but there was many times when there was nobody here, and the Lord said to me, I want you to preach every night, and there was nobody here. I'd preach seven days a week, Sunday morning and Sunday night, nobody here. And I, and, and I knew what was going on. I said, I didn't have to ask him, even though we're video recording and we're live streaming. One, just a couple months ago, we had over 70,000 people watching our live stream. Praise the Lord. But you know, I knew it was for me. See, I need to preach. <laughs> I'm so glad you're here tonight to enjoy this, but I, I need to preach. Why? Because I preach as I speak, as I open my mouth, the Holy Ghost flows, and he quickens me, and he revitalizes me, and he transforms me and changes me. You know what? I need help to be who I need to be in Christ. I need help. Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. He said, if a man does not abide in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered, and men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. People don't think they need God. That's why they don't go to church. They don't think they, that's why they're not in the Bible. That's why they don't pray. The Bible says pray without ceasing. Well, what would I pray? <laughs> what would you pray? Not only do I pray for myself, but I pray for people all the time. I pray for our nation. I pray for those in authority. I, I pray that God's will be done. Uh, in my children's life, in my grandchild's life, in my future son-in-law, my future daughter-in-law's, <laughs> by faith, that's what I pray. I pray for my enemies. I cry out to them. And matter of fact, Paul said this. He said, you helped us in your prayers. You say, how can I help somebody? Helping somebody doesn't mean you're always preaching at them and telling them how to live their life. You help them by praying for them. Paul said, I travail in birth again for the Galatians and to Christ be outwardly expressed in you. He was helping the Galatians by praying for them. Uh, we just don't understand that when we get this di divine connection from God, there's many times God wanted to wipe out the children of Israel because they were such grumblers and gripers and, and complainers and so full of unbelief and they would worship false gods. And, and, and God said to Moses, I'm just, because he knew how, what Moses would do. And he, he said, uh, Moses, get out of the way. I'm going to raise up seed out of you. And, 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 and Moses would say to God, no, God, please, please, God. He'd cry out for help for the children of Israel. And God heard his prayers. And because, he, because Moses prayed for the children of Israel, God didn't wipe them out. We need, we need help. I don't know how I can convince you. You're a mess. You need help. What do you mean I'm a mess? You are an absolute, utter mess mess without God. Any of you got enough uh, spiritual intuition to know this? I know it. I put both hands up. If I could, I'd put my feet up in the air right now. I'm telling you, I am a mess without God. That's why when people find fault with me, I, 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 I kind of laugh a little bit. I said, you don't even know a fifth of it. You don't know a tenth of it. Without God, I'm a mess. I need his help. I need his help for healing. I need his help for deliverance. I need his help for, for direction. I need his help for everything I do. And so this little lady cries out for help, who's not even of the descendant of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And God helped her. Hallelujah. Reach up and grab that. God will help you tonight. Tell your neighbor, God will help you tonight, you mess. <laughs> <laughs> I can't call him a mess. Well, just admit you're a mess. Now, pride says, oh, I'm pretty good. I, I, cat's meow. I'm pretty cool. No, you're not. Matthew 20, 30. And behold, two blind men sitting by the wayside, when they heard that Jesus back, passed by, cried out, saying, have mercy on us, O Lord, thou son of David. Have help, help. What do you think that woman with the issue of blood did? She said, if I can just get to Jesus and touch the hem of his garment, because in the old covenant, healing was in his wings. It was in the hem of his garment. I know I'll be healed. I need help. 
Uh, she spent all that she had in the medical world and it couldn't help her. And now she goes to find Jesus. She presses through the crowd. She's weak. She's not allowed to be amongst the crowd because she's got an on, unclean disease. She's supposed to cry out unclean in the Jewish religion. She ain't supposed to be amongst them, but she didn't care. When you're desperate for help, you don't care what people say. You don't care what people do. I had a couple here one night, and I had known them. They had been in one of my Bible studies up in the Poconos. And uh, the, 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 the husband ran into a very real, real difficult situation, uh, almost life and death. And so they're up in the Poconos, and they called me up and said, Pastor Mike, are you having church tonight? I said, yes, yes, we're coming. I said, there's a snow blizzard. I mean, you know, they're, they're like three hours away. It was a major snow blizzard. No, no, we, 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 we got to get there. We got, we got to get there. We need help. My, my, my husband's going to die. Alex, he's going to die. We need to get there. And, and I need healing. And, and I said, why? I, I'm concerned about your safety. And I'll be honest with you, I almost try to talk him out of it. I, I, nobody should have been out on the road in that snowstorm. But you know what? And they came late, but here they come. They were desperate for help. Now, they weren't looking to me, but they just knew that God would be here. And God healed them both because they were desperate for help. So these two blind men, they're desperate, and Jesus ignored them. Now, why throughout Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you'll find many times when people needed something, it, like, it was like Jesus ignored them. I'm telling you why. Because God wants you to prove you mean business. It's not a lackadaisical commitment. It's not a half-hearted commitment. It's all the way or nothing. It's all the way or nothing. You know, I've been here 41 years, and there was many times when uh, up to five years ago, I'm telling you honestly, it looked like we were going to be shut down at any moment for lack of money, not being able to pay the electric bills, the mortgage. Many years I went without insurance here. No insurance. I didn't have it. And I would beg God, God, let me, let me go somewhere else. I can sell this place, and I want to go out west where people are way more open to the gospel. Because uh, I, I just, you know, I love the people on the East Coast, but, man, they're a stubborn, stiff-necked, unbelieving group full of religious spirits. I wanted to go out west where people could just, I mean, they just eat up the gospel. But the Lord said, no, I put you here where you obey me. And I tell you what, I just said, God, he wanted me to prove that I meant business. I said, Lord, help me. And this is what I had to do. I said, Lord, help me to stay here. It's kept me on my face. It kept me in prayer. It's kept me trusting God. Now we're opening our Christian school back up, and I'm back into that place crying out again, Lord, help, 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 help us to open this school again. Here we go again, God, help, help, in many regards. And so uh, Jesus finally responded. And you know what he did? He said, bring him to me. He said, what do you want? Now, doesn't God know what you need or what you want? Yeah, but he wants you to vocalize it. He wants you to say, what is it you're believing for? And they said, Lord, that we might see. And he said, let it be done to you according to your faith. What do you mean their faith? Their faith was a cry of help. Help, God, help. I can't, you know, I, there's a quote I came up with many, many years ago. I would say this to God when I was in desperate situations. I said, Lord, I, I know who you are, and I know what you can do, and I know that's, that's impossible with you, and I know who I am, that without you I can do nothing. Now, Lord, if I was in your place and you were in my place, if I was God and you were Mike Yeager, I said, I would help you. That's what I would tell God. I said, I'd help you. And uh, I, I, why would you talk like that? Because God loves it when you tell him, I need help, Lord. I need help. Isn't there anybody you know that, you know, a lot of times when we're in, listen, I say this in love. In our society today, we, 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 just, uh, we, 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 we just call it quits too soon. And especially in the area of marriage, we just call it quits too soon. I'm so glad that I married a woman that didn't have no quitting sense. I'm telling you, Kathy and I went through a period in our marriage where she, she had every, not, I didn't commit adultery on her, but I was very physic, not physically, but verbally abusive with her. And, and uh, my mind was all messed up. Now listen, I love God, but how many know there's strongholds in us? We need help to get our minds straightened up. A lot of times your mind, you may not know it, it's like spaghetti noodles. 
just all mixed up and you think you got it all together. The only way you find out you ain't got it together is when you read the Bible and you believe it. He said, oh, Lord, this is what I'm supposed to be, but look what I am. And but I had a woman that would not quit for nothing. I've got a book back there called Faith That Will Not Take No for an Answer, full of stories of our life. And have you read that yet, sister? Full of incredible stories where I, we were goners, and I just would not let go of God. I just took a hold of God. I just wouldn't let go. And no matter what, now I was going to say that. That's why for 49 years I haven't used the medical world. Why well, haven't used the medical world? Because I, 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 I get an attack of the devil, whether it be a prostate cancer or a colon cancer or lumps in my body or a broken foot or a broken uh, uh, finger or all kinds of goofy stuff I've gone through. And I, I learned to take a hold of God. And I, I, it's not like I'm a spiritual giant. I just help God. Help. Your word says by your stripes I'm healed. And you healed those blind men. You healed that Canaanite woman. You healed those Lord. I take a hold of you, God, and I'm in full of pain, racking pain, terrible pain. And you know what? He helps me every time. <laughs> my kids have seen me go to bed with broken bones in my body and wake up in the morning and every bone was healed. My kids have seen it again and again. My wife's seen it. It's real because I know from whence comes my help. My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. So he helped these blind men. And Mark 10, 48, and here's another blind man. And many charged him that he should hold his peace. But he cried the more a great deal. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And then in Luke 16, 24, and he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. And he cried out to God. And he wanted help. And over and over throughout the New Testament, there's scripture after scripture after scripture that talks about people that have cried out to God. Romans 8, 26, likewise, the Spirit also help with our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. The Spirit himself maketh intercession for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. 1 John 5, 14, and this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And having this confidence, we know that he will answer us. Help God. Are you there tonight? Have you come to that place yet where you recognize you need help? I don't care how long you've been saved. <laughs> you know what? I've written over 250 books. You know what? So what? I need help more now than ever. <laughs> I need help. I'm desperate for help. I'm not ashamed to acknowledge it. I'm telling you, without Jesus, I'm an absolute mess. Without Jesus, I have no hope. I have no future. I have no life. I need him. I, I wish I really could sing. In heaven, you're going to want to hear me sing, but not on earth. But I like that old book and that old song, I Need You More. More than yesterday, I need you more. More than words can say, I need you more. Than ever before, I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. More than the air I breathe. More than my next heartbeat. More than anything. And I wish I could remember the rest of the song, <laughs> I need you, Lord. <laughs> we need God. So, Father, here we are tonight, and we cry out to you. Lord, may we never lose that revelation. If we don't have that revelation, I pray we get it. There's nothing wrong with recognizing we need his help every moment of the day. In Jesus' name, amen.